In this video, I will show you how you can take any percussion samples and easily turn them into this trippy top loop. Or take a bunch of percussion loops and with few clicks, turning them into an infinite percussion rhythm like the one is playing right now. You can also take these one-shot samples and turn them into any of these fills in a matter of seconds. All of these loops and one-shot samples are part of my Spectral Percussion Sample Pack, which you can get in the link below. Yo, let's start with technique number one. Someone once called it Controlled Chaos. So on a MIDI channel, I have a sampler. Let's start by grouping it by toggling Control G. Let's start with revealing the zone. Let's go to my Spectral Percussion Sample Pack, one shot, and let's grab 10 different samples. Let's drag and drop them into the zone. I will drag all of them to the key of C3 and drag them back to the key of C4. And then hover over the green line, right click and distribute ranges equally. So now all of these samples are ranged between the key of C3 to the key of C4. Next, let's go to our sample selector. Let's hover over the blue line, right click and also here distribute ranges equally. Then let's assign the sample selector, this little light blue line, to macro 1. So this blue line represents the area of which the first sample will be playing. So if I move the sample selector, you can see now the second sample is selected, now the third one, fourth one, fifth one, and so on. One more thing I want to do is assign the pitch to macro 2. Next, let's zoom in and let's make a MIDI clip, command or control shift m and let's fill in all the keys from c3 to c4 so if i loop this channel and solo it at the moment we have this let's move the sample selector and we can also change the pitch you're probably starting to understand the power of this device. For you Ableton users, this device will be included in the sample pack. Let's take it step forward though. If you're using Ableton, you can add an LFO. Let's change the rate to 16th, and let's change it from a sine wave to random, and let's map it to the sample selector. Next, let's take one of my favorite max for live modulation devices called Strange Mode, and we will map it to the transpose. Let's assign the range from 25 to 75. And let's have a listen. The percussion loop sounds a bit dry. So let's add my reverb rack for my Audio Alchemist collection. Audio effect racks for Ableton, where you can easily dial in the room size. For technique number two, we will head to the session view of Ableton. On an empty audio channel, let's drag and drop 10 different percussion loops. Make sure all of the loops are selected, click on this little window, and toggle on the follow action. If you're not familiar with the follow action in Ableton, this is a way for you to give an order for these 10 percussion loops to play in a certain order and rhythm. Let's see how it works. I want them to play in a 16th pattern and be triggered randomly. These two windows will determine what action will happen when one sample is playing. So I want any sample to play at any time. I will unlink them and I will set this from one bar to 16th bar. Let's also press the legato. So whenever a sample is playing, next time it will trigger, it will continue from the exact same spot. Let's solo our channel and let's play. Pretty cool. Let's record that into audio. Press tab and head back to your arrangement view. Make sure to arm Ableton and then press the space bar to play. Make sure to click on this little button to go back to our arrangement view. And let's have a listen in context. And yes, this clap is also part of my spectral percussion sample pack. It's actually a really long clap. 
With technique number three, we will easily create some drum fills. So on a MIDI channel, I have a bouncy note and a drum rack. If you're not familiar with bouncy note, this is a Max for Live device, which was released with Ableton 11, and it's free for download on the Ableton website. I would highly recommend you get it. It's a very interesting sequencer. We will set the note length and the quantize to 16th. And we will also set this to trigger automatically rather than with a note. Let's click on this piano roll and let's turn the drum rack on. Let's go to a spectral percussion sample pack and let's drag in the first 24 one-shot samples. Now when I press play, you will see balls starting to bounce around here, triggering the different samples. Let's add some direction by moving the slider. You can also add a wall to block some of the balls. And let's record this into audio. After a bit of scrolling around within this sample that I just recorded, I came up with these amazing fills. So go practice these techniques, so next time you need a quick drum fill or you need some top loops, you can easily do that. Hope you enjoyed this video, see you in the next one, peace.